Alrighty guys, so I have this video in here and I have this jump cut. I have this jump cut and I want to cover it and I want to cover it with a lower third. So this is the Mogart that we are going to learn how to make. So here we go. Let me just go to where the Mogart covers the entire screen. There you have it. And now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to move this to cover the cut. And here we go. And it's covering it. And these are the things that I can change in the rectangle, the end color. I can make it anything at all. The start color, I can make it the same, uh, but darker, whatever. And of course, the stroke color, which I'm just going to make about yay. There you have it. I can change the opacity of the stroke. I can change the rectangle opacity. I'm not going to do that because remember, I want to cover the jump cut. I can edit the text. So this is Louisa Winters and I'm an Adobe subject matter expert. I can change the font, the font style, the size, right? Uh, we make it bigger. The position of the text, the position uh, of the lines, right? So the spacing of the lines, the rectangle position. So like if I want the whole thing lower like that, then all I need to do is lower the text like yay, and I want to center the text a little bit more, maybe yay. And these are the things that we can change. So let me just play it. And there it is. And it disappears. I can make it longer if I need to, and I have protected areas here, so it would still work perfectly well. And this is what we're going to learn how to do right now. Okay, so here in After Effects, I'm using exactly the same project that I've been using uh, for the other two tutorials. So I'm just going to create a new folder here and I'm going to call it a Kinetic Mogart 3. And inside of this folder, I'm going to put uh, the next kinetic Mogart. I'll do this caps. All right, I'll make it 1920 by 1080, 2997, and everything is good. Duration 15 seconds is perfect, so I'm just going to click yay. And there you have it, and this is obviously transparent, it's not black. So what I want to do with this one is that lower third. Uh, so I'm going to bring a video as a reference just so that I can eyeball where to put this. So let me just go ahead and bring in one of these videos. And it's going to be a lower third. And you know what? Uh, this video is a little funky. So let me just do this and bring it up a little bit. So that's good. Please, please. There you go. What I want to do is I want to cover the entire screen uh, with this, and I want it to be a gradient. So I'm going to add a gradient uh, overlay effect, and uh, uh, the same as we've been doing with the other ones. Uh, and I also want to put in the Mogart a little bit of the opacity. Uh, so the main purpose of this lower third is so that I can actually cover a cut I don't like jump cuts. I get it. A lot of people use them. In fact, they're desirable for a lot of the social media stuff that we see nowadays. It, this is just my preference. I don't like the jump cuts. So I'm going to create a Mogart that will cover the entire screen, at least for one frame, so that I, uh, I can cover a jump cut. All right, so I'm going to start with a solid. The color does not matter. Right, and I'm going to add a gradient. So a gradient ramp is uh, good. I'm just going to add it to that. And the colors don't matter too much right now. So I'm just going to add, a, I don't know, like a lighter blue. In fact, let me copy that color. And then at the bottom, I want it to be like the same hue, but the, the darker. 
And we can actually change this maybe to a little bit more, you know, gradient T. And this is good. Uh, layer scattered. I'm not going to play with that. Blend with the original. No, that's, this is all good. Maybe this can come down a little bit more and maybe this can be a little bit darker. Yeah, I think I'm enjoying that more. So I just want for this to come uh, down and uh, basically just like cover uh, the screen just for one second and then go into the, the lower third. Uh, but I would like some kind of stroke or something on this. So let me just go ahead and I'm going to add a mask around the whole thing. And because it was selected... I can simply um, select the layer, right? And then double click the rectangle, the rectangle mask tool. And now I have a mask that goes around the entire layer here. So now I'm just gonna add uh, an effect. So effect generate stroke. And uh, I'm gonna make the color basically the same hue I had before, but much darker. Right, something like that. And I'll make it around EA. All right. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. And I don't need to animate it. I don't need to do any of that. In fact, I'm going to have the brush hardness uh, be at the max. And this is good. All right, so I'm just going to animate this, the solid. So P for position. I'm going to separate the dimensions. So I'm going to have the X and the Y. So the Y is going to start, uh, I don't know, here, outside of the screen, right? So somewhere around here. And I'm just going to keyframe it. And now it's going to come and cover the entire screen a little bit under uh, a second. So all I have to do is right-click the property and then uh, choose Reset. And then, you know, it just goes where it needs to go. I'll click on the words Y position and then press F9 and that way I get an easy ease on my keyframes. And there you have it. And I'm just going to give it that little bit of the bounce. Let me see how this is going. And you know, that's, that's pretty good. Huh? So this is perfect. Eventually I'm going to change that keyframe, but for now this is good. So now I just need to do the scale and I'm going to uh, get rid of the um, constraint proportions uh, so I can do the height and the width separate from each other. So it's going to start here. It's going to cover the entire thing like, uh, let me make sure it does cover it. Like right here, it covers it. So this is where the scale keyframe is going to come in. And now I'm going to do uh, the height first. And I think this is good. And then the width to about yay. All right. So same thing. I'm going to select both of them. Press F9 uh, to get that easy ease. And now I'm going to go to the graph editor. And I just want to get a little bit of... Um, I, I just want it more kinetic than what it gives it to me. And let, let's see if that works. It's a little fast, but that's cool. I'm going to select both layers, press the letter U, and go back here. And like I said, it's a little fast, so I'm going to slow it down like A. Uh -huh. In fact, let me see if I can even start that scaling. There you go. I, I think that the bouncy bounce is a little too much. So I'm going to go a little bit less on that and a little bit less on that. Let's see. I like that. I, I think that's a little bit better. Let me make sure that at some point we cover the entire screen. Not quite. So let me go ahead and come here and I'm going to move this keyframe. Yeah, I'll move this keyframe here. And I want to make sure that the entire screen is covered. So this is what I have. And that's good. So about the only thing I need to change now is the Y position, right? I'm just going to change this um, 
to a little bit lower, right? And in fact, uh, I can even go here and change it manually. And then I can copy that setting. So it's 890, so copy. I can delete that keyframe now. And I can simply paste it in here. And now for sure, this will land where it needs to land. And you know, it's not too bad. Uh, I think I'm missing a little bit more of the bouncy bouncy. So um, now that I made it a little small, let me make this bounce a little bit more. I think I'm digging that a heck of a lot more. Okay, so I'm, I'm liking that, all right? So this is what we have. Uh, I'm going to start um, uh, uh, creating the Mogart. So the primary here is going to be Kinetic Mogart 3, right? And I'm going to call it exactly that. So Kinetic Mogart 3. And uh, I'm now going to just solo the supported properties. And of course, the start and the end of the ramp. Are part of it so uh, start color I'm just gonna call it start color and end color and you know what I'm going to create a group and I'm gonna call it um, rectangle setting okay. and you know, maybe capital R here right and now I can drag these things inside of the group right and I think I also want to give it uh, some opacity. So I'm going to drag that and give it some opacity. And oh, that's the opacity for the stroke. I don't want that. Uh, actually, you know what? Yes, I'm going to leave it because maybe, 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 maybe I don't want the stroke at all. All right, so I'm going to add the stroke color and I'm going to add the stroke opacity. All right, so now on the transform, I'm just going to give it the opacity. So I'm just going to have here rectangle opacity. And again, I need to do this as uh, capital R. All right, so that's the rectangle setting, and I am happy with that. I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to... Um, to start with the text. And the text is going to be very simple. Let me select everybody here and collapse it. And here we go. I'm just going to type, this is my lower start. I think I like this uh, in, in white. Um, maybe by default, I want this to be a little bit bigger. I don't think I want it Montserrat. I think I want it uh, Roboto, Roboto Black. And this is good. Right, so I'm going to create another group. This group is going to be for the text settings, right? All righty, now I'm going to move this. I'm going to put it a little bit lower, but I'm going to give people the ability to, uh, to change the text settings. So obviously, I'm just going to solo now the supported properties, and it's going to be the source text, right? So I'm going to um, write text source, and there you go. I enabled the custom font selection and the size adjustment and all of that good stuff. But I'm going to add a couple more things, right? So it's not just the source text um, uh, and the color. I'm going to add the fill color, right? So fill color RGB. I'm going to make this white. Um, but I'm just going to give people the chance to change the text color if they want to. So text color. And uh, also the position of the text, right? And... Okay. So this is going to be text position. No, the one T in text. There you go. And uh, in case, just in case, there is more than one line here. I want to make sure that I have the line spacing in here. Um, 
and we're going to run into an issue with that. So I'm going to add an animator for line spacing, right? And if I add that to here, it's going to tell me, see, that the property type is not selected. But that doesn't mean we can't add it. We can add it. So I'm just going to create a new layer, a null object, and you can call it anything you want. I'm going to call mine control. And to this layer, I'm going to add an expression control effect. I'm going to add one for point control. And uh, uh, you know what? We can call this anything we want. I'm going to actually rename it in the Mogart. Um, but what I need to do first is I need to add an expression to this line uh, spacing property in the text. So press and hold Alt, which is option on the Mac, and then click on the stopwatch. And then, of course, you see now the expression and all of that. Make sure that you select that control layer and then pick whip to the point here. See it? And I'm going to have, just to test it, uh, two lines. So another line, right? And here we go. Now, if I select this, and I'm going to change it to 0 for x, and I can absolutely change the letting, the letting of this layer. So I can select this and then go back to solo support properties, and you see that now I can have a point control, which I'm just going to call line spacing. And I can absolutely change that. And I can change, of course, the position. So this will work for one line or for two lines. All I need to do now is add an animator to this text. And we are ready to export the, the Mogart. So let me go ahead and see where this is going. And the text is going to start coming in somewhere around here. So I'm just going to go to my properties panel here. I'll make it bigger so you can see it better. And I'm going to add an animator here for position. Let's say for position. And uh, here in the timeline, I'm just going to move this to uh, the left. And now I'm going to animate the range selector so that my text comes in. I'll select both keyframes, press F9, and I, yeah, no, for this, I don't want a bouncy bounce, but you know what I want? I want kind of like more. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm digging that. So this is not too bad. Maybe let's make it a little bit longer. Yeah, you know what? This is not bad at all. And this is good. So this is what I have uh, so far. I have uh, the rectangle settings and the text settings. And now I am going to see where the animation ends. And uh, somewhere around here. And this is good. So this is around 3 seconds and 20 frames. I'll select all of these guys. And now I'm going to pre-compose. I'll move all the attributes into the new composition. And this is good. Now I'm going to split the layer. So Shift, Control, or Command D. And now I'll select that split layer. And I'm going to go Layer, Time, Time Reverse Layer. And let me just make this much shorter. Let me go to where the animation starts again. So somewhere around here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'll press the letter N here. I'm going to right click and trim the comp to the work area. And now from here, and boom, 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 boom. Right. So N. I'll right click the work area and I'm going to create a protected area here. And the animation starts here. So B. And then, of course, it ends at the end already. I'll create another protected area. So this is not bad. I'm going to go back to the pre comp and I'm going to delete that placeholder because that's what it was. It was a placeholder. And now I can simply. Oops, let me undo that. 
and there you go. And uh, we're good. All I have to do is export this. So I'm going to export the motion graphics template. It tells me to save. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm saving and this is good. And I can add any kind of keywords. I usually just add my name. And there you go. And now it's creating the video preview and all that good stuff. Uh, so I actually may need to save it again because I want to set the poster frame so that I can recognize it. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll export it again. Video. And there you have it. So let's go ahead and use this now. I'm going to go into Premiere Pro. All right, so in here, I actually have uh, a different clip of me. I'm just going to add the lower third right here. And we're just testing that this is exactly what we want. All right, I'm going to mute it. So this looks good. I mean, I obviously need to change this a little bit. So I'm going to uh, zoom in and then I'm going to go up a little bit like yay and move this a little bit to the right but basically this is what we have the lower third is working well now let's see the things we can change so i can change the end color i can change the start color that's what i'm talking about and the stroke color as well good the rectangle opacity, I can change it to about yay. Of course, if I want to cover a jump cut, I better leave this all the way in. But in this case, I don't want to. So there you go. I'm just going to put my name here. Sure. There you go. And then, of course, the lines uh, spacing. Let me actually go to the lines. And this is what I have. And now I can bring everything up a little bit. And I think I want to make it a tiny little bit bigger. Yeah, and I'm digging that. And let's see how it works. And it's coming in. Yes, I am enjoying that actually quite a bit. And I can make it shorter. Let's see if that works. And let's see if this appears to the other side or does the reverse. And it sure is. And there you go. Fabulous. If I did have a jump cut, then I would put the opacity at 100%, right? I would scrub to the point in the Mogart where it actually covers the entire screen, right? Let me just make it a little bit... Uh, Let me make this yet. Now I need to fix this a little bit. See why we need to test these things? Because it's falling in between. Um, so I'm going to go back into After Effects. Let me go into that pre comp. And there you have it. And at some point, it's got to cover it. You know, it's got to cover it. All right, so here we go. So the Y position, I'm just going to reset that. Oh, I see. That's why. So that was my fault, right? Uh, because I wanted this to end a little bit later. It's It's going to, in fact, I'm going to animate the Y position here. And once it uh, it arrives here, it'll be where it needs to be. So this is what we have. Perfect. And this may even be too long, but it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so let me save this. Export the motion graphics template again. Give it my keyword. And obviously, let me export that again. 
and we'll test it and then rock and roll. All right, let me go back into Premiere Pro and this is the Kinetic Mobit 3 and I'm going to replace it. I'm pressing and, pressing and holding Alt. So there you go. It's Louisa Winters. Me. Let me actually add it again because I believe it's misbehaving. Yeah. All right, so Louisa Winters, it'll be Smee. And I can even say, oh no, you know what? This is too high or too low. And in fact, maybe I should add, you know, something for the position of the lower third. And in fact, we can easily do that. Let me go back into After, After Effects. And I can add it here to the control, right? I can add it to the control of the layer. And uh, uh, say I can even parent the, the um, this rectangle to to this and then this position i'm gonna put it in the rectangle settings and i'm just gonna call it rectangle huh. can't even type rectangle position and there you go so this is this is really good so depending on where your person is on the screen, you'll be able to lower or rise uh, the, the, the lower third. So let me go ahead and save this and export the Mogart again. And again, I'm going to give it my name as a keyword. It's going to again warn me, hey, does it exist? Blah, blah, blah. You want to replace it? I'm like, yeah, I do. Yes, I do. So here we go. We'll replace it. And there you have it. So now this is too high. I can lower it to here. I can lower this to, yay, maybe center it a little bit more. I'm digging that and this is what I have. <laughs> if it's too long, we're gonna make it shorter, right? And it should be doing the opposite now, and it is, and now it's going to leave, and there you go. And at some point, it's covering the entire screen, and I can make that cut. And again, it isn't. Let me find out why. All right, I'm going to zoom in, make sure that my playhead is right on top of the keyframe. And it is, and I'm just gonna go and bring this up to here. I need, and in fact, I'm gonna make the scale a little bit larger, why not? So let me just go to the first keyframe of the scale, and I'm gonna make this 110 for the width and 110 for the height. <laughs> because it's important that this covers the entire screen, right? So I'm going to save the project, save the Mogart again. And again, the keyword is going to be my name. Again, it's warning me, but uh, this should now work uh, the way that it needs to, uh, to work. So let me go back into Premiere, replace it. And there you have it. Right, and now cute. They add it by default. There you go. And if there were a cut right here, you would never see that jump cut. coming in and going out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this Kinetic Mogart tutorial. I know there's a lot of back and forth, but that's how I really make him because I forget something, so I go back and forth and then it usually takes me about three times and then perfection, all right? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.